Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another installment of Paradigm Shift and Educational Comedy. Um, Happy New Year. Hope everybody's um, holiday season has been going well and all of that. I just wanted to make some brief observations and reflect a little bit. You know, of course, now that we, you know, are a few years into surviving 2012, obviously the world didn't end and, you know, we're, we're all here. <clears throat> and for the most part, the planet seems to be just fine um, as far as not being completely destroyed and whatever. <coughs> oh, excuse me. <coughs> <clears throat> but, uh, allergies or morning phlegm or whatever the heck my problem is this morning. <clears throat> Pardon me on that. But anyway, I've kind of noticed that each year kind of seemed to be a bit seemed. Um, like, 2011 was kind of you know, trying to figure out our identity, both individually and collectively, had to do with identity and survival and all that good stuff. So, you know, the Occupy movement was born that year and other subsequent movements and, you know, so on and so forth. So, 2011 really seemed to be a year where we kind of asked ourselves, well, who the hell am I and who the hell is anybody else and, you know, what the hell's going on and just really all kind of revolving around identity. 2012 seemed to really be revolving more around emotion kind of facing our feelings and <clears throat> the feelings of others, how others feel about us, how we feel about others, how we feel about the world, how we feel about our place in it, and kind of just everyone deciding how the heck they feel about shit, you know, and just it seemed to really be be focused on, you know, facing our feelings and our emotions and just really examining how in the heck we feel about ourselves and about life and how things have been and, you know, all that. 2013 was kind of more like taking a look at how we, how we think about things you know, more into the psychological rather rather than the emotional. You know, what do we think about this? What do we think about that? How how do these various thought processes work? You know, what do I think about myself? What do I think about others? What do I think about the world? What does the world seem to think about me? You know, and and, and why do we think these things? Why do we have all these these crazy thoughts about stuff? So, of course, we started seeing a lot of, you know, political upheaval and stuff, too. You know, what do we think about what, you know, the president's doing and what Putin's doing and what Monsanto's doing and, you know, this piece of legislation and that news story and, you know, how people are acting and whatever. So it's very much a year of thought, a year of pondering you know, just, just what the hell do we all think about this, that, and the other thing anyway. 2014 really seemed to be a year of, you know, call it a, a First Amendment year, <laughs> if you want to call it that. <clears throat> um, just a year of doing our best to learn how to be authentic and express ourselves authentically, you know, for positive, negative, <laughs> better and worse, and 
you know, everything in between. 2014 really seemed to be an extremely vocal year where, you know, everybody was kind of <clears throat> shouting everything from the mountaintop, so to speak. Any and every opinion about everything under the sun. And, you know, that's the year that, you know, we had the whole Bundy Ranch thing, and it was all about how we how we we felt about what they were doing and how we felt about how the news was portraying it and how we felt, how we felt, how we felt. And, you know, the whole bikers thing and how the bikers felt and the truckers thing and how the truckers felt and, you know, American Spring and how everybody's feeling about what, you know, everybody's doing in Washington and so on and so on and so on. And I've also seen, you know, a lot of people just kind of get up on their soapbox, how they feel and think and just expressing about, about society and about themselves and about the educational system and, you know, just totally about everything. A very expressive year, just like, you know, f just, it was all about First Amendment stuff. It was all about, you know, our right to be who we are and to express it and deciding, you know, whether or not it's right or wrong for us to, you know, fully be who we are and fully express as we are. Because obviously, in a lot of cases, there is nothing on earth more offensive than the truth. And in my opinion, there's a difference between truth and fact. Fact is, you know, Gravity does what it does. The sky is blue. You know, fire burns. The grass is green. Rocks are hard. <laughs> you know, that sort of thing. Those are those are facts. You know, you can observe that, and mess with that, and measure that, and experiment with that, and you know, you'll see the facts of those things. Truth is more like the true nature of something. Like if someone thinks a certain thing and feels a certain way, then regardless of whether or not who feels that that person is, is right or wrong about that, whether or not someone's saying, oh, they shouldn't be thinking that, they shouldn't be feeling that, or whether someone's agreeing with them and saying, oh yeah, I totally agree, I feel that way too, I think that way too. Regardless, however it is they think and feel, if they are expressing the truth of that, then it's their truth. It's their, they're speaking honestly, they're being genuine, they're having genuine integrity, you know, whether or not they're saying something that is making people really butthurt and it's damned inconvenient or, you know, whether or not it's some wonderful truth that everybody can look at and agree with and go, oh, how nice it is that that person is saying that, or anything in between, or a mix of the two, or whatever. As long as what you're speaking is true to what you currently think and true to how you currently feel. And of course, you know, people's views, what they think and what they feel kind of shift as as we evolve and expand. So um, if we thought and felt one way and now we think and feel another after that expansion and reflection, that's still truth as long as we're honest about that. So <clears throat> truth is more subjective where fact is more objective. Even though I really don't think there's, you know, too horribly much of a difference because humans can only perceive things through their own eyes, through their own perspective, through their own individuality, and through their own subjectiveness. And all a human can do is really attempt to be objective, but there's no way any human can really fully succeed with objectivity because by default they're they're viewing reality through the <laughs> through the eyes of being human. And by being an individual human that with similarities to other humans as well as differences. So 
you know, I really don't think there's anything as such as pure 100% objectivity, but I think we can all do our best to get as close as we can. And there's nothing wrong with that. And then there are things that are purely subjective, and there's nothing wrong with that either. So in my view, the truth of something is, is someone tells you what they really think and how they really feel. And they're being honest with themselves about it and not putting themselves through any self-deception. And they're being honest with you about it, and they're not trying to cover up how they feel or try to stay face or whatever, then, then that is truth. That is their truth in the moment. And if they said any other thing to try to win someone's appeasement or to save face or to cover up any proverbial skeletons in the closet or whatever, if anybody tried to do that, then that would not be truth. That would be deception. That would be fabrication. That would be lies. That would be fake. <clears throat> so that's my take on what truth and integrity and honesty and all that is about. I think 2014 was very much a year where a lot of people decided, you know, I'm going to stop being fake because society has taught me that, oh, I need to say this this way or I need to be that or I need to feel this or, you know, I at the very least need to present myself in such a way to where it seems to others as if I'm thinking in this acceptable, socially acceptable way or feeling in this socially acceptable way. And it's just, I think a lot of people have just, it, it really started hitting home that it's just really, it's really been feeling as if they've been living a lie. And a lot of people have started to just not do that anymore and to just, you know, be truthful about things and just be like, hey, you know, when I said this and did that and so on and so forth, that was just because I was taught to conform and I didn't want to make waves. I didn't want to get into trouble. I didn't want to offend anyone and I was trying to fit in and whatever. But now I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm tired of living a lie. <laughs> so there was like a lot of that going on in 2014, I noticed. I mean, you know, on every, you know, freaking level of the scale from, you know, just your average, you know, common individual, you might say, your average Jane or Joe, all the way up to the quote-unquote more public, professional, etc., you know, that sort of labeling. Um, you know, lots of people on lots of different levels just kind of stepping up and being like, you know, I'm just, um, I'm tired of playing the societal game. I'm just, I'm going to be truthful about what I think and how I feel from now on. And anybody wants to be offended by that, that's okay. Anybody agrees with it, it's okay. Disagrees with it, it's okay. You know, whatever people want to think, feel, or do, it's, you know, it's, it's okay because they are then also in turn being truthful with um, their reactions to you. So if you're being truthful about what you're expressing and they are being truthful and honest in their reactions, be they positive or be they negative, then I think we kind of start to realize that that whole reflex to be buttered over that, that we can we can allow that to pass like a storm. We can allow that to subside and realize there's no reason to really be butthurt. It's like if someone has a negative opinion about us or anything we've said or whatever, then so what? That's that's their right to, to have that opinion. And if they're telling you, hey, I have a negative view of what you just said. I think you're a douchebag for saying that. And I think you were rude and inappropriate and whatever. And if that's really the truth of how they feel, then to tell you anything else would be a lie. And so they're they're being truthful with you. So when when we start wanting the truth more than we want to avoid feeling butthurt, then we start learning more and we start understanding more and we start understanding more about ourselves and we start 
understanding more about others and start understanding more about the emotional and psychological mechanisms that drive society and and why things are the way they are and even though a lot of that information can be damned inconvenient at times it's liberating at the same time because with that that understanding comes liberation and we're like wow that makes so much more sense now so existing in a state of <clears throat> constant honesty and truth and genuineness at, at least at first isn't necessarily the most easy thing in the world to do and a lot of people come to it just as a as a pure point of desperation like they just get so sick of living a lie that they're just desperate to no longer do things that are just raging so hard against who they are and so they just kind of in their in their desperation decide to move more in the in the direction of truth just because they just do not have the energy and the will anymore to you know keep going with societal pretenses and demands and it's just like screw it if society wants to hate me let it whatever <clears throat> so 2014 was wow very much a year of of that sort of thing going on in my opinion and 2015 really feels like it's going to be a year of action because after all that expression i've noticing you know been noticing december was a really weird month in fact you know i have a video called december strangeness that me and rich did and December was just an ongoingly, progressively weird month. I don't mean bad weird or good weird or, you know, I'm not trying to give that a specific label, but let's just say a lot of, a lot of deviations and changes and, and shifts and unexpected things. And I guess the best way I could describe it is people in December seem to really be starting to draw a line in the sand so to speak and and deciding that you know they've been thinking they've been feeling they've been learning they've been expressing there's been a lot of data in data out a lot of lip service so to speak a lot of things being expressed and debated and discussed and whatever and just that whole idea that decision being made that all right it's time to take what I've been thinking and feeling and learning and expressing and all that and, and, you know, doing my best to learn how to put that into some sort of action or practical application, you know, something that's making a bit more of a difference. I mean, granted, you know, being outspoken about your views and sharing your knowledge and stuff. True, that is, that is an action in and of itself. I'm not... You know, I'm not debating that. That is an action in and of itself. But I'm talking, like, you know, more than that. Like the, um, just the uh, the idea that you know, most people are usually sitting there like, oh, I don't like this that's going on over there. I don't like that that's going on over there. I wish somebody would do something about that. And then it dawns on them, oh wait, I'm somebody, aren't I? And it starts dawning on them that, oh, everybody has this attitude of, I wish somebody would do something about that, whatever, you know, that happens to be. And just this, this awareness that, wait a minute, if everybody's pointing outward and going, I wish somebody would really do something about that. And everybody is somebody. Then it amounts to nobody actually moving in that direction and getting anything done so it's all this kind of butthurt lip service and you know feeling justified with lodging grievances and you know so on and so forth but you know it's really time to start you know applying what we've learned and I've been noticing that in like um you know, new age circles and truth movement and things like that, where the truth movement is starting to realize um, its own 
hypocrisy, so to speak, that, you know, they realize that they're starting to realize that just having certain information does not make them better than everyone else or make them more enlightened than anyone else. And that if they sit there thinking, oh, well, I have this information, so I'm just oh so enlightened and blah, 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 and everybody else is so beneath me. And if you disagree with me, then you must be a troll or a shill or a sheep or a government operative or, you know, whatever paranoid bullshit you want to insert, <laughs> you know, in that sort of a phrase. You know, they're starting to think, wow, you know, that's exactly the attitude I bust on the, on the quote-unquote sheep's asses for because those sheep feel completely justified. They think that they have a certain level of knowledge and they think that their view with their knowledge is the only real reality and the only right way. And then they bust on everyone else's asses who doesn't see reality quite the same way and then... You know the truth movement looks at them and goes wow they're being they're being arrogant little bitches and we're so much better than they are but then they start seeing that they're just doing the same thing because the extra knowledge that they've gained because each little part of the truth movement is gaining equally valid bits of knowledge but they're all different bits instead of putting it together to complete the puzzle and working with each other they've been like bickering and bitching and fighting and stuff and so they're starting to realize that this attitude is acting just like the quote-unquote so-called elites and the quote-unquote so-called sheeple and you know everyone they look at and point a finger at and go oh poo poo on you you're just you're being so ignorant and dumb or nazi-ish or <laughs> you know whatever in the meantime, they're sitting there preaching about freedom while totally acting like Nazis and having a complete disregard for freedom and trying to force their will on other people. And a lot of them are finally starting to realize it and going, oh, wow, you know, I need to, I maybe might want to consider not doing that and maybe consider changing course and maybe consider taking other people's opinions and perspectives into account not necessarily feeling obligated to agree with them or believe them or be aligned with that, but at the very least allowing the data to be put on the table and taking into consideration that maybe they've got some pieces of the puzzle to add instead of being adversarial about it. So there's people coming to those realizations within the truth movement, starting to. And within like the New Agers and stuff like that, you know, I'm starting to see that, you know, they're realizing that, you know, they can't just sit there and, you know, meditate and <laughs> hope that that's enough to change the world. Because it's not. I mean, you know, doing all that stuff is, is, is great, don't get me wrong, but there is really more that that needs to be done um i heard an analogy recently that you know someone was just like hey light worker it's time to do the work you know because what they've been doing is like the equivalent of going to eight years of medical school to be a doctor and then they get they get that degree and they, they come to medical school and it's like hey so what you're going to do now what kind of practice you're going to go into or whatever and then it's like, oh, I think I'll take another four years of school. So they take another four years of school, and then they get that next degree. And it's like, oh, cool, you got that next degree. What are you going to do now? It's like, oh, I'll take another eight years of school, and so on and so on. So they, they continue to educate themselves while completely defeating the purpose because at no time are they ever actually moving themselves in the position to be a doctor. They're just simply continu endlessly continuing their education, but they're not actually putting any of the knowledge in, into use. And of course, that's, that's a metaphor. And it's one that I've heard recently, and I, I feel it's pretty accurate. Hence, um, you know, the person who is explaining that saying, hey, light worker, it's time to do the work, you know? Sitting there and meditating and watching documentaries and whatever, and having esoteric knowledge and da-da-da. Okay, well, that's, 
that's all well, good, and cool, and so on, and whatever, but you need to do a bit more than that. And I think the first most important, like, action step, if you want to call it that, to work in the, in the direction of moving more out of lip service and more into action is just that idea that you can you can have your your personal truth your your belief systems and, and whatever else and think and feel however without trying to shove it down everyone's throat without trying to force them to change thinking oh my god well you know i'm i'm just so enlightened with all this information and i really want them to believe how i believe so that they can relate to me so that i don't feel all alone and da 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 and you know and then people like you know alienate their friends and family and whatever um and i think that you know instead of doing that like you know have your beliefs have your truth have your thoughts your feelings your knowledge and whatever and just personality wise just be the person you're wanting to be like how you treat others instead of you know making everything about trying to get other people to discuss everything you're interested in into and whatever you know just just be yourself and, and treat people the way you would want them to treat you and if all these other more quote unquote higher knowledge esoteric quantum whatever the sort of subjects that you might be interested in really don't interest these other people whoever these other people might be then you don't have to go there and if you know that they're not really ready to go there and they like try to try to ask you like well what's your deal with all that anyway and you know you could really tell that it's a loaded question they're not it's not like a curiosity question like wow i'm really curious to know what your deal is it's more like a question that is rhetorical that basically translates to, well, what the fuck is wrong with you? You know, why are you so batshit crazy? <laughs> you know, when you realize it's a loaded question, you might want to consider responding with like, well, you know, I've tried explaining that before and you don't really seem all that interested in these sorts of things that I'm interested in. So why don't we maybe just agree to disagree and agree that it's okay that there's some interest that we don't share in common and that there's nothing wrong with that and why why don't we we focus on uh, what we do have in common why don't we explore what we do have in common and see what we have in common and you know respect each other's rights to not be interested in what we're really not interested in and I've been kind of seeing a bit a bit more of that start to kind of kick up and people acting a bit more that way and I've kind of started seeing these shifts you know kind of be really start to move forward in you know December and you know obviously moving into the new year and I've also been seeing a lot of what you might call inspired action like um just for lack of a better way of saying it things that in my opinion <laughs> really should have been done a long time ago but <clears throat> as people are getting slowly getting out of this mentality of feeling like they need everything to do or excuse me need everybody to do everything for them and getting out of this mentality of needing a babysitter and getting out of this mentality of adulthood being an extended state of adolescence and realizing that when they say somebody needs to do something about this that they too are somebody moving out of that and starting to make small changes in the in the direction that they would prefer to move things and so they're kind of assisting in their own way in shifting the paradigm by by being the change in, in just little steps it doesn't have to be like big profound 
you know, sledgehammer dropping sort of things. You could take it in little baby steps, but I've been, you know, starting to, to see that come up a little more. And I'm like, hmm, well, that's, that's interesting. That's cool. People are kind of respecting their pace more and giving themselves that permission to take those, those baby steps in a, in a forward movement instead of, you know, sitting there pissing and, and moaning that, you know, they think everybody else should do something about stuff. So I've also kind of seen this building up in like world events too and just geopolitics and things like that, just all the way across the board. And December was like really the noticeable start in, in that buildup. And I really think 2015 is going to be an action year. That's my opinion. I mean, we'll see what it what it ends up becoming. But I really think it's going to be a year in which we really begin to transition out of lip service and and start doing a bit more. I'm not saying that everything that everyone's looking to accomplish will be absolutely accomplished this year. I mean, you know, you can't plant a tree seed today and have a 40-foot tree tomorrow. But I, in my opinion, I think that a lot of the people that have been in the habit of just kind of sitting on their hands about things and expecting everybody else to do things and being more about lip service will start to, at the very least, move a little bit more into that practical application as, as they realize that they only need to be the spark that gets the fire going. They don't need to be the whole fire as they start to realize, oh, well, if I do this little bit here and this little bit there, and other people see me doing that, and then they start doing similar things too, and it's only a little tiny bit here, a little tiny bit there, but when it starts being done en masse, it, it like really starts to add up. It really starts to make a huge difference. And people start to see that that's how you become the change. And I think we're going to be seeing more and more of that and it's really going to help push change forward in a more rapid way than has ever been before i mean hell if you look at the last 10 years compared to like the rest of human history it's like a time of the most rapid development ever and then even if you look at like from the year 2012 to now it's still more rapid development than any time previous and even if you look at it from like you know 2013 to 2015 it's like again still major rapid acceleration when it comes to change not just changes in infrastructure and technologies and new services coming out or whatever but also changing people's thinking like people are having a bit easier of a time understanding things and become aware coming aware of things that even like you know three or four years prior like you would have thought there's like no way in hell they could have you know been capable of starting to integrate certain understandings but then here they are doing it and they're blowing your mind like wow hell just froze over you know like like that sort of thing so i, I think we're going to be seeing a lot more of that i know that sort of thing has really started to kind of pick up in, in my observation, you know, in December of 2014. And so far, it's just continuing to, you know, to chug on forward. So I really think we're going to be seeing a lot more than that. So I think we're going to be seeing a lot of people accomplishing a lot of personal goals in their own individual lives. Like not completely, not the complete accomplishment, not like ultimate accomplishment, not like uber accomplishment, but really starting themselves in a more forward direction that they've been wanting to go instead of feeling so stuck and in limbo and whatever. And I think we're going to start to see that a little bit, like, you know, politically and geopolitically in world events. And, you know, as this collective paradigm shift just continues forward, I think that we're going to see a lot more of it in 2015 than ever seen before. But again, it's, you know, still going to be just, just, a whole lot of really small movement forwards. 
I mean, I'm not claiming that there's going to be all of a sudden these major earth-shattering, big booming accomplishments on humanity's part. But also, I'm not claiming there won't be either because it's highly probable that there might be at least, you know, two or three of those too. I'm not saying there won't be. I'm just not saying that there absolutely will be or that there absolutely has to be. And I'm saying that really good, positive, profound, freaking awesome change can take place in tiny little bitty baby steps that are just done en masse and that that, you know, collective cooperation within each individual taking just these little tiny steps is just, it has an incredibly profound effect. So, I mean, that's pretty much my review of, you know, from 2011 all the way up to 2015 here and what, in my opinion, I feel that, that 2015 is going to be about. It's going to be a year of action. Whereas because 2014 was more of a vocal ex expressive year and not really so much um, a year of, you know, efficiently impacting action, you might also consider like 2014 to be the year of failed starts. Um, I kind of noticed that as a trend too. Most of the things that people were trying to start in 2014, it was like, you know, trying to trying to start a car with, with the car battery low on juice. And it's just like, and like the car really couldn't get started. You kind of need to pull out the jumper cables and shit. Like, you know, we, we thought that the whole Bundy Ranch thing was really going to like, kick off a major ongoing awakening of humanity and like yeah it did a little and that was cool but it climaxed and then it stopped just like everything went quiet same thing with the bikers same thing with the truckers same thing with american spring so on and so forth it reached a certain point but then stopped so it's like it's like a failed start i'm not saying that these things didn't accomplish anything and their little brief fleeting moments of existence yeah they they accomplish quite a bit i'm not denying that i'm not discrediting that but as far as like that that ongoing exponential ever building push that a lot of people would like to see happen with a lot of things uh we didn't see any of that sort of movement in 2014. So that's why I call it a year of failed starts. But um, I think 2015 is really going to be an action year, in my opinion, just based on what I've been seeing. So 2015, in my humble opinion, is going to be a really good year for, you know, getting new things going. So, yeah, um, you know, that's just my opinion as an individual. You know, you can take it or leave it. It's cool. It's fine by me. I'm just voicing certain observations and you can you can agree you can disagree if in your opinion your observation of those years has been something completely different for you then you know cool that's fine you're you know you're allowed your your equally val valid um you know perspectives of these things as well you know that's cool i, I don't have a problem with that that's you know it's it's all good it's all fine by me but i'm just i'm just sharing my observations and Anybody who's had some more observations and cool. Um, anybody who hasn't, you know, that's that's cool too. That's fine. You know, I'm not trying to make it like a, a contest of who's right and who's wrong or whatever. I'm just, I'm just uh, sharing my observations with you and just putting data out on the table, and, so to speak, and people can just do whatever it is they want to do with it. So, all right. On that note, I think I will um, end this episode. There's nothing else that I think I really have to say that isn't just starting to proceed to be more increasingly more circular <laughs> just kind of re-going over everything I've just said in like slightly different expressions so um I'm gonna gonna kind of end the loop here I've ranted enough so uh thank you for listening thank you for tolerating me and um catch y'all later um hope everybody has a really great new year and peace out.